or the time that my sister took me on a date this Christmas. Oh? Yeah, did I tell you about this? No. I went, uh, I went home and my sister wanted to watch Murder on the Orient Express. And she's, okay. she's 16 and she wanted to go see this movie with her 16 year old friend. I said, great, like I'll drive. And, uh, and then she said, oh, my, my friend wants to bring her older sister. And I said, oh. I said, Lucy is, how old is this girl? Oh, she's, she's 25. Oh, <laughs> uh, so you mean you want me to go on a double date? Is that what you're asking me about? Oh my God. The 16 year old sister, <sighs> red embarrassed. I don't know who was more, who was more embarrassed, my sister or this girl that had to sit beside me in a Roman collar for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Left Footers, and with me this episode is Deacon Robert Lee, and I myself am Father Roger Nijelski, and we're here just to talk about complete nonsense. Drink beer. So, drink beer. In an empty pool. In an empty pool. With a diving board that works, I checked. You know, I like to watch science fiction movies. One thing that I've noticed is Whenever they show like far future, everyone's wearing the same thing. Uniforms. Uniforms, right? So my From uniforms is, you came into uniforms you shall return. Is that well, the idea? That, that's yeah. the thing, right? Yeah, okay. But right. why don't we as Catholics seize the means of production of these uniforms before they're coming? Because everyone's saying that they're coming. Look at any movie, you see You're uniforms. Wear red, yellow, Blue? No, 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 no. Let's let's make them liturgical. Liturgical, liturgical, liturgical uniforms. Uniforms. Is that, that like your liturgical socks? Uh, a little bit, yes. Yeah, the yeah. green ones, the red ones, the white ones, the gold ones. The gold for, ones. You know, oh my goodness. And, yeah. So, what's your thought on this? Because I mean, we can have like crosses that represent our penances in Lent. You know, we start out really strong, and then the cross yep. gets weaker and weaker, yep. and then boom, there's Good Friday again, where we all fast. Hey. Right? The Orthodox would always be like two weeks behind us. That's right. So they That's would be right. carrying the previous colors and you would be able to, you know, recognize them out in the crowd. Oh, they're Orthodox. Though they're Orthodox. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And then the Baptists wouldn't wear shirts. No. Not they would all. have just, just white shirts. Just white shirts. Just white shirts. Okay. No colors. All right. So we got uniforms. What else could we add? to the, Well, first of all, what are the liturgical seasons? We got Lent going in too soon. Ordinary time split into two. Advent, Christmas, Easter. Yeah. yeah. Not in that order. Not, not in that order at all. No. Not in that order. But we do have solemnities throughout this. So, I mean, you would have some variety. Right. You change things up. Oh, yeah, It yeah. wouldn't be boring. Yeah. So it's up. like a party shirt. It's like a Catholic party shirt. Yeah, absolutely. Like a solemnity of Christ the King. We could have one with a big hood, kind of like a canopy. You know, for our Corpus Christi processions, yeah. yeah. Okay. All and right. of course, people would have their favorites, and and you know, as as they do with feast days and such. I mean, I thought for like the beheading of Saint John the Baptist, you would have a little bit of a silver lining just on the collar. So you know, you you could it's like a silver plate. Like exactly. A silver plate. Oh, I right? like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah. We can pitch this to the high schools. Get them working on it. I, I think we could. Get them I just on it. Okay. I, I I don't know if that would be something that would fly with them. We could, we could have uh, like a Katniss Everdeen shirt, you know, like where hers just lights on fire. Maybe we could get, uh, we're talking Pentecost here, everybody's wearing red, and then they push a button I and like then this. flames start coming up. Uh, we probably need bigger churches we probably and would, made of marble, Yes, uh, which we don't have. We, we don't have, but you no. know what, I, I think for the sake of these some shirts. some churches deserve to be burned down? I, 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 no, no, I'm saying for the sake of these shirts and, you know, like going in this direction, okay. I think we need to start building marble churches again. Marble and, you know, churches, Just, yeah. you know, making yeah, them big and, and, and spacious for these kinds of activities. <laughs> That's right, for the burning right? of the shirts. Exactly. For the burning right? of the shirts on Pentecost. Yeah. And just for the record, the shirts don't burn off, right? We don't want to no, bunch no, of, no, 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 clothe no, no, people no, in no, church. Exactly. Yeah, just, long sleeves. You know, Inspired by, right. you know. Inspired by the Hunger Games. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, we can Christianize that. We can, we can, baptize, we can baptize it. We baptize can baptize it. everything. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I agree. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's one of the things about being ordained a deacon now is uh, people and notice you often. Yeah. 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 Yeah, getting gas isn't as simple as just getting gas anymore. No. No. People stare no. at you. That's right, they stare at you. I like when people smile at me. Sometimes they stare at me and you kind of get a, you know, like they're upset with you already, even though they don't know you. Uh, part of the burden of 
witnessing to the church, I guess. Yeah, and sometimes you get the double glance too. You get the double glance, you know, yeah. Like, what, really, is yeah. that? And it doesn't have to do with how tight your clericals are. No, not at all. It doesn't all. have to no, do with no. that. No. <laughs> no. One day we'll have an official studio. You know, once we make it big, NBC, ABC, whatever it is. NBC, NBC, CNN will have us on. You know, once we're bought out by Disney, we know oh, we've made it. Oh man, then I'm gonna meet Jack Sparrow. Really? That's the one celebrity you want to meet? One of them. It's definitely one of them. Okay. Who's like the top celebrity no, you don't man, want to meet? Oh, man, Disney? Like, Disney owns a lot now. Disney owns... It's hard to keep track of what they own. Yes. Yes, it or is. Or what they do with films that they buy out. They make live-action remakes. Live-action remakes. I can't remakes. wait until they make a live-action remake of The Left Footers. <laughs> they'll probably even be able to use this pool hall. They probably will. Be able to use this but, you know, they'll add a lot more CG and... Let's see. Probably be a dragon fun. in the background somewhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. would if I could. Or a bad storyline that involves characters who develop unsuspectingly in use of magical powers. <laughs> yes, magical powers. <laughs> I had one idea when I came in. I don't remember what it was. It was probably a genius idea. But... No, it was about the saints, because you want to talk about the sanctoral cycle. Although, I don't know if we should use the term sanctoral cycle. You have a little line just going there and explaining what the definition of it is. If I could pick one saint, I'm going to pick a blessed. Okay. Uh, so the church approves, right? Yeah. Church approves, has elevated him. Yes. Uh, he's just currently awaiting a second miracle. Oh, okay. Um, and his name is Blessed Cardinal Newman, patron oh. of our college, right? Uh, okay. Now yeah. just a follow-up question. Yeah. Say you have three hours to spend with the saint oh here on earth. Yeah. Where do you go and eat? What do you eat? Uh, I'd imagine what do you that... think Newman would like <laughs> to enjoy for the three hour period of being back here on earth to have, you know, brunch with you? Uh, without, uh, without commenting on the quality of English cuisine, uh, I'd probably stick with uh, bacon and eggs. I feel like he'd appreciate me making breakfast and that's the only thing I know how to cook. So huh. I'd make him some sunny side up eggs and some crispy bacon and a big old cup of coffee and, uh, and we'd talk, we'd talk and we'd talk. Actually, I'd listen, I'd try to listen as much as I could. How about yourself? If you had one saint to meet with, who would it be? Well, I think I would have a lot of fun with St. Thomas Aquinas. Yeah. Because my shirt for him would be triple X large, <laughs> no matter what it is. Everyone's getting that kind of size of yeah. shirt. Uh -huh. That's how you wear it. Uh -huh. Food wise, I think I would get him a hamburger. <laughs> it's been a couple centuries. One burger, two burger, oh, like burger? a triple, like, like a triple? cheeseburger, like, like a grandpa burger kind of thing. I think yeah, so, yeah. right? And, and get him some like onion rings and just. I think he would enjoy that. I think he would have like his fast food fix. They wouldn't. And, they didn't have deep fried stuff, right? They wouldn't fry stuff bizarre. the way we do. Yeah, right. Because yeah, yeah. you think. Deep fried is pretty easy to make. Yeah. Right. You get oil. You get. You have oil. You do have right? lots of oil. Yeah. Yeah. You have probably more oil than you know what to do with. That's why they used oil for, you know, defensive strategies in their castles. I don't know if they stuff. cooked with that oil, but I know what you're saying. Well, but you know, <laughs> they could get oil I'm and saying, yeah. get the amphoras, fill them up. You heat it up. You throw meat into it. Yeah. You take it out. It's deep fried. It's done. Crispy. For some reason. Crispy delicious. You know, Augusta, uh, Thomas Aqu uh, Aquinas knew so much, but didn't know the didn't wonders know. of deep fried cooking. Didn't know and the wonders of waiting in a winter Canadian drive through where you have to fight, you make the choice, how low does the window go before my lap gets cold? Yeah. He wouldn't know that struggle. No. Wouldn't know that struggle. No. So your shirt would be very large, but what image would you have of St. Thomas on this shirt? Oh, probably just, you know, lines from, from the Summa lines all around. Summa. So that if you're ever bored, you can just start picking up your shirt and start reading little pieces and, you know, reading the subclauses and all such things and, and actually getting to know good arguments for the uh, existence of God. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you're just walking with knowledge. Probably five proofs. So you could just oh, have them. Absolutely. The, yeah, you go well, with a triple shirt. X, you know, large There's shirt. There's a lot you can of things you can put on things, a small right? print, big shirt. There we go, right? Yeah. No, we could ruminate on my junior, on my elementary, junior high experiences, but maybe we won't. I think I pretended to be a rabbi for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how priests wear the stoles and rabbis have sort of like the prayer shawls? Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, because, you know, I'm in junior high and clearly this made sense to me in, in that 
time, you know, I wore a scarf because I thought that was cool. And I would wear it almost like a priest or, you know, like a rabbi. Mm -hmm. So I joked that I pretended to be a rabbi for like two or three years in no, junior yeah, high. Yeah. And, you know, I'm shocked that I'm a priest now. You know, I couldn't you see go. it coming at all. You, you can see yourself being a rabbi, but not a priest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, junior just, high, I wore shorts 365 days a year. A red athletic shirt and shorts. You never knew when you were going to play sports. No. You no, always had to be ready know, to play sports. You always had to be ready. Yeah. Always had to be ready for a basketball game. Yeah. Yeah. Or soccer game. And you never knew when you had to go off to do a bar mitzvah. So, you know, <laughs> and I, I, I understand your struggle. That's right. The I city life it. versus the country life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. So what are your final thoughts, Deacon Robert? Well, we started off talking about the liturgy. Started talking about the liturgical seasons. The one thing we missed was the sectoral cycle. Oh. So we missed, the church has the, has the seasons of the year, like we talked about, ordinary time, Lent, Advent, that kind of mark these big, these big events, and usually they're surrounding the incarnation or the okay. resurrection, right? Easter, Easter, Pentecost, these things, that, these days that change the seasons, Epiphany. But we also have in the church the sanctoral cycle, which is when we celebrate days like the Feast of St. Teresa of Avila, or the memorial mm -hmm. here in Canada, or we have the patron saint of a parish like St. John Bosco or St. John the Evangelist, or June 28th, 29th, the Feast of St. Peter and Paul, right? Yeah. So we have, these, we have these days of the saints. And there's a lot of wisdom in, these, in the church's sanctoral cycle, just like she has wisdom in her liturgy, in the liturgical cycle. Things like Christmas is on December... 25th. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah just checking, just, just checking. double checking. Yeah, yeah okay, right. thank you. So 25th of December, nine months before that, on March 25th, we have the Annunciation. Hmm. The church wants to make this connection between the angel Gabriel coming to Mary and making this proclamation and Mary's acceptance of this and Christ's birth, right? Just like she wants to make a point about John's words that he must increase and I must decrease, yep. right? When he sees Jesus, that John's feast day is on the 24th of June, right? Mm -hmm. Which today we know that the 21st is the solstice. So we have the waning the increase of the sunlight to the decrease of the sunlight. Oh, that's cool. So up to John, we have this increase of the sunlight. And then John's feast day. And then as it goes on, the sun gets less and less. Until Christ's birth again, and then the sun gets more and more and more, eh? Hmm. It's kind of all these wisdoms. What's your favorite feast day in the church? Well, St. John the Apostle. St. John the Apostle? St. John the Apostle with the great sort of tradition of the blessing of the wine as is oh, connected yeah, with yeah. his, uh, uh, his um, own story of blessing a cup of wine and a demon, a snake, jumping out of it. So there's a great tradition of blessing wine bottles that day and consuming wine. So, I mean, he's, he's a like saint to join. Oh, it's a Sounds great a day. day. How many bottles did you bless this year? You know, no, you one actually, on it? no one actually uh, yet, came up eh? with it. Right. So maybe next well, year. Hopefully this helps with that. Oh, I think hopefully so. Hopefully we get people bringing bottles of wine. Uh, you know, Not what? just for us, but also that they might be blessed. and I'll be pretty happy food. either way. Yeah, so, that's right. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right. This year, I have to admit, my favorite feast day is going to be the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. Oh, really? What's uh, happening then? So the Feast of St. Peter and Paul and the Vigil, um, the bishop has called me to the Holy Priesthood, to the Sacred Order. So by God's grace, I'll be ordained a priest. Like yourself, only a year after you, hey, you're ordained a priest a on uh, June 28th this year, so I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm sure that'll be a big day for the rest of my life. Uh, and what good examples to live after, eh? The best. The best. The best. Thanks for having me on your show, Father Roger. Well, thanks for, for being here, and thank you for watching our very first episode. Well, thanks for wasting time with us. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe, and send us a comment, and we'll see what we can talk about.